Hey guys, it's Brian, and this week on Firebird Friday, we're pulling the engine apart on the Firebird. Now this is a Chevy 350 uh, from probably the mid 70s, the best I could see on the casting and everything else. It looks apparently has 305 heads as well. I'll list below the numbers that I found on the uh, block and on those heads. But anyway, so um, as you can tell, this is kind of towards the end of the video. I didn't start doing an intro video, but We'll get into the video and tearing this side down and see what we got. All right, guys, I know you've uh, mentioned before you hate when I do voiceovers, but unfortunately, um, in the summertime in Phoenix, Arizona, when it's 110 degrees out there, if I was to uh, talk while working on this motor, the sound of the cooler, the evap cooler that I have in my garage, you wouldn't be able to hear me anyways. So it would be pointless to do that. So on with it. Um, as you can see, we have the uh, engine still on that engine hoist, that cherry picker, and starting to tear it down. First thing is going to pull that uh, flywheel off there. That's, uh, I believe that's six bolts that uh, pulls right off kind of expose the backside of that motor and my backside. You're going to see a lot of my backside, and I do apologize, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, get our engine stand here. I'm going to just hook that up to four spots up on the uh, backside of the motor. Get those in, and, uh, wow, that thing is shaking pretty crazy there. And get them all tight, get it in there, and, uh, you know, I'm still loving this Harbor Freight uh, um, cordless impact, I mean, for the what I got it for last year, uh, 100 and some dollars, Psh, I love it. All right, so raise it up a little bit and uh, kind of square that up into there. Get it in there. Good, good, good. And, and again, this is, it should have been done with two people, just like pulling the motor. I should have had, you know, an extra person, but for the most part, it's pretty straightforward and, you know, easy to do. So once that's out of the way, I'll pull this uh, cherry picker out and uh, we'll start the dismantling of this motor. Uh, I'm going to pull the fan off of it. There's uh, four long bolts that secure it to the uh, hub for the uh, water pump. So I'm going to take those out and throw those off to the side. And I'm kind of crazy. I, I label everything. I have these little plastic bags that I write on what they are and in the plastic bags they go. Um, do that and then next I think we're going to take this alternator off go ahead and just pull all the brackets loosen it up and pull the belt put that aside off comes the pulley from the water pump go ahead and take off the uh, brackets for the uh, alternator there and it's pretty and it's chrome and um, you know I just I, I know my brother was all into chrome so I may just keep all this chrome goodies or add to it <laughs> I don't know yet I don't know yet so where the hell did I go where did I go see that see the airflow from that cooler I mean it makes working in the garage so much easier in the summertime so if you're in the southwest uh, country and you have a garage and you need to work on it you pick up one of those air conditioners or coolers and I'll link a, a link somewhere around here where you can check out the video I did and there's the sweet wife she came out to give me probably some grief about something um, you know like you're spending too much time in the garage but you know no she's actually pretty cool all right so water pump time and um, I had, I knew this car sat for a long time and we knew that radiator was rusted out if you watched any of the other videos on this project and so I was prepared for oh, oh I got a kiss out of that nice um, I was prepared to to find a water pump that was probably on its last leg and oh my there was so much rust and corrosion in that water pump I'm I'm just for the price just gonna buy a new water pump next gonna take off that crank pulley there's a uh, the one big center in the middle and then there are three smaller ones that attach that crank pulley to the harmonic balancer we'll get that going and uh, you can see my uh, Porsche Boxster engine there off uh, sitting on the floor. That's going to eventually become a coffee table or something. Alright, so now that pulley's off. Put it off to the side. And found cobwebs inside the harmonic balancer. <laughs> Alright, now the bracket for that comes off. And throw that away. Or throw it to the side, I should say. And now the thermostat housing with no thermostat. <laughs> Look at that corrosion. Ah. All right, little by little here, and 
And I was, yeah, this, yeah, it's an interesting, when we dig more into this, you'll be able to see more of what I'm thinking here. All right, so I figure the next thing to do is get all these wires, get the uh, HEI distributor off of this, take off just one hold down bolt, and that whole distributor will come out. So that's what it looks like. And up, up, up. Good, good. And away it goes. And put that off to the side. Next, probably going to uh, remove that plate. Let's go and take that off. Okay, that was uh, the best $20 um, Amazon purchase I've ever made. I've used it a couple times on this build. Uh, my neighbors have used it. They've come over and said, hey, can I borrow that plate? I'm like, absolutely. Go for it. So that was well worth the uh, 20 bucks or whatever. Pull those gaskets off of there. Sandwich together. All right. Go ahead and pull off. I believe that's going to be that water sensor. No, I'm just putting the uh, studs. The back two studs came off of the uh, intake there. So I can put those back on. And, yep, trying to take off that. The uh, That's a water temp sender. And could not get it. There's a wheel, there's a way. Let me tell you. I will get it off of there. So, there we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. All right. Oh, and done. And, oh. Oh, yes, that's right. The wife gets a, a, a box once a month with goodies in it. And so, she had to show me the uh, one of the rings that came in that monthly box. I forgot all about that. All right, let's take the uh, valve covers off. Kind of expose those. Now, you notice how the whole engine is, is orange. Um, I just assumed, and my my bad, that everything on this motor was just yanked from one vehicle and put into another. Uh, we're, we're about to find out that's not so the case. <laughs> so, go ahead and we'll take off this valve cover on this side. And make sure to save all the hardware for that. And there we go. Bring that in a little closer, and there we go. That's done. All right, and I believe next we're going to tackle that intake. I'm going to grab this. Actually, no, I believe that starter is the next thing I'm taking off. And that's just two bolts that come in from the bottom, guys. Really quick and easy. If, if this is your first, if you've never um, tore down a, um, a Chevy 350 motor, um, it is probably by far the easiest motor I've ever taken apart. I mean, it's just bam, bam, bam. It all just kind of falls apart and then it kind of falls back together. That Porsche motor that's there on the ground, that 3.2, um, there are, it, it literally took probably, I would say, um, two boxes of Ziploc bags to inventory the entire, all the bolts and nuts and every little piece. So an American 350, um, you can almost do it in your sleep. So that's why I'm not being too detailed on this. I just kind of want to tear into the motor and give you guys some ideas on what this is. But I want to document the entire process for the family and uh, those those guys who are following along. If this is going to ultimately be the motor we use or not, I'm still debating if that's what I want to use. Okay, so expose that head. And even with the cooler on, it's freaking hot. And then it had rained the day before just a little bit, just enough to dry the humidity up, uh, which made it even worse. So you have a series of, I believe it's eight bolts that hold the head at the bottom uh, that are exposed to the block. And so go ahead and we'll just kind of loosen those up. And I'm going to leave the... Uh, two outer ones in just that way a little bit of safety when we go to pull the bolts that are the block uh, head bolts that take that are inside the actual head under the valve cover so we get in here and do that all right so next we're just going to loosen up the uh, rockers on top I'm not going to actually remove them just loosen them up a little bit that way when it comes time to pull the uh, push rods you can get a little bit more room uh, to kind of loosen those up and take the tension off. Um, some guys do it, some guys don't. It's just, it's one of those, you know, things, you know, do you, uh, you know, put butter on this or you don't put butter on that? Do you do this first, do that first? So it's one of those things. So let's go ahead and pull the intake off so we can get to uh, the oil galley and uh, just start removing those. 
and I've always taken things off in a crisscross pattern, and then of course when it comes time to put it back on, you know, it's the uh, um, half torque, and then go around and get in full torque, but we'll do that when we get to uh, building either this motor or something else. So, go ahead and get in there. Yeah, some of those bolts where the uh, carburetor is, uh, you're going to have to use a, a swivel head to pull those suckers out. Get in there and grab those. And grab, grab, grab. And I want to take this thing off here in just a second. And there's going to be little tabs um, along the outside edge where you can get a screwdriver in there to kind of pop it off. So we'll take a minute here, grab that. Yep, right there, just kind of see how it popped up. You can do that, and then up and off it comes. That backside's pretty darn shiny in there. And this is when you start to see more of the uh, the water ports that were just rusted. They're just crap in there. And I've actually, I took my uh, magnet, and I, I, you know, stuck it into that garbage. See that? Um, and it, it wasn't metal shavings. It was dirt. Yeah, so... Who knows what? But, so we'll go ahead and uh, get in there and start loosening up those rockers, like I said earlier. Just take some tension off of those. And then, again, just, just by hand. We're not trying to take them off. I just want to loosen them up a little bit just to kind of get in there. So go ahead and just zip right through those. Good, good, good. And all I'm doing is just making sure I can spin the, uh, the push rod. Now that I have that get this in position here and then in between there are those head studs kind of just uh, clean them out a little bit and there we go and again I just kind of jump around instead of doing them in a straight line I kind of just bounce around on those we're leaving the tension little by little as you go and get in there and this is when I started kind of paying attention to the uh, casting number on that head. So in between those those rocker arms, you're going to find numbers that are um, molded into the actual head in metal. And those numbers will identify what head this is originally. So, and again, you can have guys that go in and will, um, um, you know, mess with them but for the most part this gives you at least a, a baseline of of what you're dealing with and those heads were 305 heads they weren't even 350 heads we know the blocks are 350 um however the engine number stamp which is kind of where my hand is right there um completely smooth no numbers so this engine at one time i'm going to assume was decked uh, or the head area was was cut be uh, to make it a little bit smoother and to uh, line it up um so and the bolts, the head bolts on, on this side, man, they were on tight. I had to get a breaker bar to pop those. But uh, once I got them, they were ready to rock and roll. Go ahead and we'll get this head off here in a second. Yeah, and, and again, I, it's days like this, man, I wish my brother was, was around because I have so many questions. <laughs> Which he'd be like, blah, 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 but I'm, I'm, discovering them little by little and uh and i just my brain just goes okay like was this some horse trading for someone did he build it did someone else build it i mean i know putting 305 heads on a 350 block uh, ups the compression because these mid 70s 350s had hardly any compression because of the um environmental regulations and crap but all right so let's go ahead and we'll take off those last two bolts on the bottom there just keeping it in place for safety and a head isn't really that heavy but it's uh it's not feather light either go ahead and get this in the position there we go now you guys get a little better look of uh, when i pull this off and again there's going to be some little tabs that you can use to break the uh, seal and of course there's, you know, there's a head gasket a few little taps here and there, just kind of loosen it up. And this head did not want to come off. And again, those head bolts were, were on there tight too. So I'm just trying to find a spot where I could uh, manipulate it. And then once I found it, there it is. Kind of lift up on it and uh, off the uh, head comes. There she is. So let's take a look at uh, what we got here. 
moving right along. Kind of rotate a little bit just to see. And super clean. Um, like no carbon buildup on the tops of those pistons. So I'm, and you see me pulling the, um, the push rods there. I, I'm, yeah, no carbon. Super clean. So I don't know if it's, that was a head gasket problem that uh, we're dealing with on this side. Or was it a fresh rebuild? But um, now there's the gunk and all those water jackets. That just made me uh, wonder. Go ahead and pull the actual head gasket. But look how clean all that. I expected to see, you know, some buildup, some carbon buildup, some black stuff. Um, and then we're just going to go ahead and pull the lifters out. Now what I do is I put each lifter, because I don't know if I'm going to reuse this cam or not, so it's better to do this now, is I take a plastic bag and I put P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, P8. That way all these lifters I know are on the passenger side of the motor and where they go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And put those in bags and throw those off to the side. If I'm going to get a new cam, then obviously I'll get new lifters that match that cam and, and whatnot. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and do this and uh, get it going. And this kind of, you know, I'm going to do the other side as well, but no need to show it because it kind of looks the same. But I'll show you a video next week of what we found on that other side. But you can see right there, uh, super smooth on the engine block number. And here just the... Yeah, see, that makes me think we had a, uh, a blown head gasket or something down in there, especially how clean those pistons were. Um, not a lot of scoring or, or, or marks inside the uh, bores. Uh, it does have that typical, you know, last uh, quarter inch or so on each one. It was all pretty much the same there. Um, yep. That was pretty typical. But it was mostly the gunk from all the water jackets of just, and again, I don't know if it, it, dirt or, or just sitting for 25 years and, and dirt will expose the system. And when we started it up, it just kind of pushed it all through. But that's what we're looking at for uh, there and down the, uh, see the um, distributor bar there inside each one of those lifter holes. So, yeah, this is it, guys. And uh, see, right there, look at that. Nice and smooth. That makes me think this uh, this block's been uh, decked before. And uh, more of that just gunk. And again, I, I, I took a magnet, and nothing came out on that magnet. So it's just dirt and grime and age from sitting uh, in Oklahoma for 25 years. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull off this other head. That will be next week's video. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.